when it comes to these epoxy projects, we've done fire, we've done water, we've done a bunch of water, we've done weird, they're all pretty much weird these days. And uh, the next place we want to go with it is like that earth vibe, earth, wind, and fire. <laughs> and uh, I've had this idea of like this carved bonsai tree thing, the epoxy table in, in my brain. And good news for Yins is I can't 3D model it, so we're just winging this one. And it's going to start out by gluing up a bunch of blocks so we can get to carve it. Let's go. So for material on this one, we're going to go with uh, maple. This is soft maple. I have a bunch of this thick stuff left from when we were building a bunch of shop stuff. Um, and we're going with green on the top because it's supposed to look like a tree. I like that contrast of the light wood and the green. So we're just going to throw this through the thicknessing process um, and then get to, to building out some, some, some things. Conceptually, what I'm kind of thinking for this thing is it's, it's, it's not the easiest thing to draw, but I want it to kind of resemble like the Lord of the Rings tree people. Why? Because I love Lord of the Rings. So I want it to like kind of build up and then come out sort of like this. And then what we'll do is we'll make that in like kind of two forms. So more or less, we're just going to get started probably doing something like this. So I think like if I can start from something like this, maybe even go wider on this base and then come up to something that, you know, kind of goes like this. And the reason, if you're curious, I'm looking to glue it up like this is because I know long grain on long grain is a lot stronger. So for those of you that are like, just why don't you ten in it and just stick arms out, I just don't want to have to deal with potentially carving through that. It's not a bad idea. Jordan had the same idea. I just don't want to do it that way. So to make this actually work, we're going to glue it up in tiny parts. So we'll go this and then kind of that in here. And then once this is a big column, I should be able to plane it to flatten it out. And then we can start gluing on the rest of the parts because we're just going to do the same thing and start building out and then bald eagles. That was one flying by. Yeah, so these are pretty much just gonna keep gluing blocks up and organically working through this because there's really no rhyme or reason to anything that I'm doing right now. So enjoy. I'm gonna offset them slightly so that they have like a, I don't know, pretty much like a, qu a quarter inch offset because I want it to kind of like curve a little bit. Why? Because that's what happens when you're making art. It semi resembles a tree. Cute. So I just want to make a fl <coughs> flat glue surface. So I don't actually care if it's square. I just need the glue ups to all be pretty flat. And because I'm an idiot, this is one block too wide to go through my plane. That's a one, and that's a two. Now we're gonna create a sandwich. Need to go at least two more wide this way. So this thing is actually, look it's looking pretty damn cool, wasn't it, Sam? Super cool. Uh, it's a little Minecraft tree-esque looking thing right now. Um, so now that it's all dry, we I need to figure out a way to flatten the bottom first, and then we'll get to the carvings. Maybe I'll do the car, do I flatten after? I don't know. Okay, kids, so I'm gonna try to on the bandsaw and to give myself a little bit more of a stable surface. It'll be gliding on this. 
So we're gonna put some more blocks on here to give that uh, something that seems a little more safe. But as, as we do around here, she gonna get squirrely. So prepare yourself for the squirreliness. All right, so now that she is uh, able to sit on the table by herself, because she's a big girl, we're gonna get to carving. We're gonna start out here with the, uh, with the Arbortech Turbo Plane. The Arbor Tech Turbo Plane. Do the bulk of the removal, and then we'll work down into the cuts all tools you guys see me use all the time. Um, so, let's make a mess. I got a lot of the waste out. I'm not really comfortable sticking that down into the top. So I want to get these like veiny tree base bottom things going. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is use one of these pretty aggressive die grinder. I'm going to use these die grinder burrs. Um, should remove some good material and let me start start hogging down there and just keep uh, keep on chugging through. So this is going relatively decent. If you were to look at it, you'd say it's a tree. Now the bottom of it, I don't really love. I think I'm gonna need to bring this down into here a little bit more to kind of give the effect that I'm, I'm going for here with like a, I don't know, we'll see. I'm also getting a lot of tear out in these parts. So that's gonna take a lot of time. Hand sanding, which is always a blast. And then I blew off, I actually blew this chunk off, or this chunk off with the chainsaw because it was getting a little, uh, it was getting squirrely. Um, so we're going to this little bit of a slow moving process here with this, with this die grinder bit. Just gotta keep uh, moseying along and, uh, and shaping this thing up. I don't know, I've never done anything like, well, I have done anything, I take that back. I've never done something with this much carving, I should say. I don't know, maybe the waterfall, would you think the, uh, not the waterfall, the lava table had a lot of carving, but that's epoxy. It's just like cutting plastic. There's no grain and you don't have to worry about tear out and stuff like that. This is probably the most carving I've ever done. But if you guys carve and you've got any tips, leave them down below. Um, I also just ordered a very expensive respirator because I'm sick and tired of not being able to see and breathe uh, while I do this kind of stuff. And I do quite enjoy it. So we're gonna get back to it. I might switch up the head on the, on the die grinder. I don't know, but we're gonna keep pushing through. Let's go. All right, so the chainsaw busted this thing off again. So we're gonna tape back on. It's like a tape. It sticks to itself. After a very long time sanding, the longest. I like the shape. Next thing we need to deal with though is the height. So my, my vision for this, Indians are probably wondering, how the hell are you gonna mount that to a tabletop? Is I'm just gonna stick it in some resin and let the resin kind of form around it. But all the tops need to be the same height. So what we're gonna do is dim the lights and fire up a laser. And because the table's flat, we should be able to get perfectly flat and level reference point for it. Ugh, I am so sorry, guys. In one way or another, some sort of ass clownery happened and the files either got corrupted or deleted or whatever. And we, we just literally don't have the pour for this build. So, Here's a bunch of footage of me pouring things in the past. Hopefully 
hopefully that got your pour fix for you. Basically all we did for this one was pour it the exact same way we poured the desk for the Victory Float Lounge, and then I just shoved our tree into it, basically. And then now you get to watch me take it out of the mold. So appreciate you guys understanding. Shit happens. Hope you uh, will forgive me. Now let's get back to it. So we uh, are all dried up. This thing actually looks sweet. I'm super pumped to get it out of the mold. We're gonna take all this stuff around it, pop it out. I don't know, I might, I might do a little carving still on the top, change that shape up, but gotta say, looking phenomenal. Super pumped. <laughs> That actually went great. <laughs> that one's not gonna come off. Oh, it did. Watch your nuts. <laughs> Move your sack. God, it's way heavier than it looks. <laughs> oh. That's looking pretty cool. That does look pretty cool. All right, it's a tree. It's a table tree. It's a tree table. And it's kind of level. It's close. I knew I'd have to do some shimming on the bottom. But it's it's pretty cool. I mean, oh, it's a proof of concept for sure. So, looking sweet. And this is a lot bigger than I wanted it to be. We'll get that bottom fixed. But if you see here, there's kind of a natural line here with the way the heat swirls came through this resin. So I think I'm gonna just outline the tree, give it a little bit more of an organic look. Cut that out and I think that'll be smaller. It's still pretty centered. Yeah, I like it, let's go. That's got a little more tree vibe going on. Check it out from a distance. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. It looks like it should be in the Lion King. Love the Lion King. I wanted to name uh, my dog Simba, but I don't have a new dog, so I can't name it Simba. I just call Hank Simba. And then I hold him up like this. And yes, he weighs 70 pounds. All righty, so we are going to now give this thing a sanding, get it ready for finish. Cause it's looking, it's looking damn good. I almost forgot because not only are all of you extremely concerned with my lungs all the time, so is my wife. So I went ahead and invested in the ultimate safety apparatus. Yes. Welcome to VersaFlow. So I may just like go to full time wearing this thing because I can do all the good stuff. I can spray. I can toot in the shop and not have to smell it as well as in the home. I might even wear this home. I can go to the grocery store and not have to mask up. This is what this thing is the best. <laughs> so with that being said, we're going to spray the bottom first and then flip her over as we always do. And in the words of our forefathers from outer space, let us spray. me while I send this photo to Zach Herberholtz who loves epoxy. And done. All right. So that's going to be a wrap on this one. I think this thing turned out sick. Uh, great proof of concept in my opinion. I want to know your opinion though. What do you guys think? Uh, I think this is the beginning of what's going to be a pretty cool series using uh, kind of a building style like this. Uh, if you guys want to get any of the tools I used in this video, I've got everything linked down below. And remember, you can save 10% on the epoxy we've got here using that link. And then when you're done buying all the stuffs, I got a link right here for you for the next ridiculously weird epoxy project we got going. Check it out.